it has been reasoned that this strategy will facilitate faster delivery of needed basic services and promote participatory governance. And since the enactment of the Local Government Code of 1991, we have actually been undergoing devolution and decentralization for the past 25 years. The enactment of the Local Government Code is considered as the most fundamental and far-reaching policy that addressed the decades-old problem of a highly centralized political administrative system with most significant political and administrative decisions being done in Manila. The enactment of the code was welcomed by, the mo by most sectors of society as it radically transformed the nature of the power relationships between the central government and the thousands of local governments in the countryside through the devolution process. It finally transferred the responsibility of the delivery of the most basic services to the local government units, including appropriate personnel, assets, equipment, program, and projects. Indeed, at the end of the day, local autonomy meant less reliance upon the national government, including allotments made by the national government, and increased reliance upon internally generated resources or resources jointly generated with other institutions such as other local government units and private institutions. It has been recognized that indeed federalism may not be the answer for solving all our governance problems. However, given the above mentioned hypothesis, it will improve Philippine governance. As mentioned earlier, the structure of a federal government is expected to empower the people and accelerate the country's development. The Philippine political administrative system is replete with examples of tensions between a highly centralized governmental structure and the demands for autonomy among the various component local units. There is an imperative for a dominant and assertive leadership necessary for the consolidation and even the very survival of a weak state. There is a demand among component local institutions for autonomy from the central government in order to enable them to become more responsive to local situations. A weakened economy, political instability, rapid population growth are the concerns and challenges of current Philippine governance. Various reforms and strategies have been tried to improve governance. The undergoing consideration of revising the 1987 Constitution and adopting federalism is the latest development. Issues and concerns regarding the conversion to federal system from the recent unitary structure have to be confronted. Federalism is touted as a possible means to resolve provincial disparities in the country and end the war and development problems in Mindanao. Since this structure allows for national and regional units of government to have distinct and overlapping jurisdictions. While the idea of federalism is attractive to most of us Filipinos, the possible benefits that are marketed by this idea will inevitably come at a cost and will require extensive time and effort from both the government and citizens alike. The current administration will have to make sure that the people are satisfied with the division of responsibilities that will be stated in the revision in the Constitution, and that the work towards building a federalist country will not alienate other states or leave them behind the way they are being left behind right now. We hope that with further and wider discussion of the presented recommendations, 
we can develop a meaningful and genuine change in our institutions here in our country. At the end of our pursuit, all we desire is to see a Philippine society which is just, fair, and peaceful with a government that truly serves. Again, muchísimas gracias y vaya con Dios a todos. Thank you very much, Attorney Belua. As mentioned earlier, this forum is divided into three sessions. To prepare us for session one, we shall pause for a short break. But prior to that, allow me to give you some reminders and directions. For the purpose of documentation of the proceedings, this conference is being recorded. We have comfort room situated on the right side of the building. You can locate it outside of the session hall. We have a smoking pocket located at the generator area near gate 3, and I think Mr. Francis J. Leonardo would be happy to escort you. The venue for the press conference is at the LRC conference room located right across the session hall. And the Muslim prayer room is located at the ground floor of the Savior Hall, and the members of the Secretariat will be very much willing to usher you to the area. Thank you. Coffee is served outside. We will also have the photo opportunity at this time. So 